G'day and welcome. This particular video represents a slight change of pace. I've been dealing with a whole lot of integration recently, but this one's for younger students. I sometimes tutor children as young as seven, eight, nine, ten, and uh, I find that children of that age, and certainly even children in, in late primary school and junior high school, have trouble reading large numbers. So this video is how to read large numbers. So if you have difficulty with them, uh, reading the size of the national debt or something like that, uh, here's how to read them. The thing to realise is we use a decimal system of numbers, which means when we count to 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, when we get to 10, we don't have another symbol for 10. You know that we have symbols, 1 or 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9. We don't have some other strange symbol for 10, and another one for 11, and so we don't. We actually just stick with these numbers, these symbols, numerals, and just by the mere fact of putting them into another column, we're able, by combining these, to create a new number. This one here means it's worth 10. We've got 10 with nothing left over, no extras. That's a 10 plus another 1, 10 plus another 2. This is what we call decimal notation. And similarly, once we've counted up in the tens, once we've counted up to nine tens and nine units, and we add one more, we, we don't have ten with nothing left over. We don't talk about tenty something. We actually move to another column, and we say this column is worth hundreds. It's worth ten of those. And that's the way our number system grows. So, if I had a number like this one, this represents the units that I've been counting. And every time they ticked over to complete 10, they went across to this column. So this represents how many tens, and this represents how many hundreds. It would be a nightmare if we had to have 400 different symbols to learn or something like that. But here, we would talk about 400 and three tens and five units. Now, we never bother saying the units. Everyone knows we're talking units. I never talk about five units of apples. It's just five apples. And although we say 400, we don't say 310. We've got a word for 310. We call it 30. So all of our tens end with a T. I've just part of the etymology of the, land, of the words and the language, how they've grown over history. So we've got 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So this is 435. This is 792. We have no 10, so we'd simply say 604. This would be... 820, and we wouldn't bother saying any units because there aren't any. So that's 820. <coughs> Where students encounter difficulties when they go to extra columns. What are ten hundreds worth? Well, ten hundreds are worth a thousand. So if I had a number in this column, They're worth thousands. And if I had ten thousands, we appropriately enough call this the ten thousands column. There's no extra new word for it. And if we have ten of those, ten lots of ten, we have the one hundred thousands column. Let's put an eight there. And here's the confusion. A lot of students, because we had 435, a lot of students want to go 800,000, 
30,935. And it makes perfect sense to read a number that way. But it's not the way that we now read them. We write our numbers in bundles of three. Now, when I was growing up, we used to put commas here. The next one over here will be, let's say, a seven. I haven't, I'll talk about it later. But we used to put commas to separate our groups of three. Since the uh, metric system has become pretty universal around the world and the SI system, the System Internationale, has become pretty much standard. They frown on this and they say really they should be left blank. There was a time that people were actually putting periods or full stops here and commas for a decimal point. So we had quite a confusion. Uh, we'll talk, when I talk about decimals, I'll talk about what to do with the point. But for the moment, let me just say the international standard now is just to leave a gap although a lot of people ignore it and still use commas or periods. This number will be read simply because we have eight hundreds of them, they're thousands, and three tens of them and they're thousands, and nine thousands, because they're all thousands, we simply say that we have 839,000. That's the easy way to think of it. If we had 10 lots of 100,000, we then enter what we call, or we, we get what's called a million. 10 of those, and I'm going to put a number in here, I'm trying to use one of each. Uh, this would be the 10 millions column. And this column, if I call it, I'll put a one there. This would be our 100 million column. And again, students would try to say uh, 100 million and 60 million and 7 million and, and so forth. It's not what we do. Because they're all millions, we simply call this bunch the millions and we read 167 million. The next bunch are billions. So all you've got to learn from here on is what we call each bundle. This would read 208,167,839,435. And that's how we read large numbers. If I write these down, this would be 219,617,000. 792. So to read large numbers, you only have to be able to read three at a time. So in other words, you have to be able to read up to the hundreds. And most students have mastered that. And then you have to know that the columns go thousand, million, billion. And there aren't too many numbers go far beyond there, but I will add a few. We go thousand. million, billion, by means two. It's not so simple with million, it comes from miller meaning a thousand. I won't go into where it came from and why it means a thousand thousand, but suffice to say it's there. By means two. The next one is tri meaning three, trillion. There, then there's a word quad meaning four. Some of you probably have or know about quad bikes. Uh, they're bikes with four wheels. Uh, so it's quadrillion. Uh, recent, not so long ago, there were quintuplets born. Quin means five. So it's a quintillion. The Latin word for six is six. And I suppose if you come from New Zealand, that's a bit of a standing joke down the southern hemisphere. Um, Six, sextillion, and uh, please, I apologise to my New Zealand friends, for whom I have a number. Um, it just is a, a joke, but they're, they're nice people. Uh, and sept, we're back. To, we're into Latin still. Sept is seven. Uh, sept, sorry, septillion. 
and the list would go on. You can look these up on the internet. But quite honestly, um, at the moment, most figures, if you're talking about national debts and things, you might get up to trillions. Uh, the world's population is in billions. There's really no need for most things to go up into this field. So if I rub this off and write a very large number, so I'm going to write a little bit smaller, and I write uh, 91763-208-407-314255819. So if that's our number, all that I need to do is to trek back, because just looking at this end, I can't tell what I'm doing, be my units, my thousands, my millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions, and quintillions, quin and quad. So how would I read this large number? I'd read 91 quintillion, 763 quadrillion, 218 trillion, 407 billion, 314 million, 255,819 units, if you wish. But that, my friends, and particularly my young friends, is how we read really, really big numbers. And um, when you get into the field of science and higher mathematics, you'll learn about something called scientific notation, which bypasses this in a way. Uh, it's another way of expressing these large numbers. But for the moment, learn these. Learn this list. Look up the other ones, octillion, nonillion, decillion, undecillion, and so forth, vigintillion, some very large numbers, and enjoy the process. But don't get confused about what the individual bits mean. It's every bundle of three, that many million, that many billion, and so forth. Much simpler than you might have thought. So just practice and get good at it. I thank you for watching and encourage you to leave a comment, to like the video, and, of course, to subscribe to find out, find out about future ones. Thank you.